London is a city of royalty, host of the monarchy and in the sport of boxing, kings in every division. From Lennox Lewis, David Hay, to Chris Eubank Sr. and Nigel Benn, London has always been a staple in the sport of boxing. And outside of the professional scene, London is no stranger to influential boxing. In fact, it served as the first host of the major influencer boxing events, including KSI versus Joe Weller and Logan Paul versus KSI. So while the professional ranks cut their teeth and earned their stripes, gathered their belts under the watchful eye of the queen, the influencer boxing scene, much like real life, is still yet to crown a king. And there's one man that believes he's about to ascend to the throne, and that is none other than King Kenny. King Kenny knows that the stakes are high in this turn, which is why he's putting in the long hours that turn to days, that turn to months in the gym. It's also why his coach is Daily Perales, a professional boxing coach with a roster of up and coming undefeated pro fighters that coincidentally is also King Kenny's brother. Brotherhood is a bond that can't be recreated and can't be broken. This duo, Daly and Kenny, are a force to be reckoned with in influencer boxing. Daly doesn't treat Kenny any differently than his pro fighters because he knows what it's like to get in that ring. With four professional boxing matches under his belt before becoming a coach, he understands when you enter the trenches, it's just you and that other person. But Daly also knows that means war. And when you go to war, there's always a winner and there's always a loser. On April 22nd, 2023, the Kingpin quarterfinals took place at the OVO Arena in London, England. Kenny was taking on my mate Nate, a Thai boxer with a small amateur boxing background and record of 3-0. For that uh, Nate fight, we went full in, even Martin, full up. They had so many rounds sparring uh, with my undefeated pro, Martin Foru, uh, where Martin was not holding back, you know, and um, that builds character. Nate and Kenny started as a very cordial relationship with both of them being respectful, but like I said, when Daily Perales and King Kenny go to war, there are no friends. We knew Nate comes to box on the back foot with behind his footwork, move inside to side behind long punches and against someone like that also he's not experienced we we tried to put that intimidation kind of effect into nate and i knew backstage in the changing rooms on the tv monitors when i saw nate warming up and i saw him like <sighs> breathing like this and yeah it's all right to compose yourself but i could see in his whole demeanor that he was really nervous. The fight started as a technical chess match where both fighters were looking to engage, but not overcommit. But as the rounds went on, Kenny started to use his biggest weapon and one that is the most formidable in influencer boxing, his lead hand jab. Behind that jab, Kenny stepped on the gas and pushed forward to throw big, heavy shots, which ultimately sent my mate Nate to the canvas. This was an eyebrow raising moment for Kenny. His backhand being full of potential, but in the past, his kryptonite. A talented fighter in his own right, but standing in front of Kenny that night, there was no doubt he had ascended to a different level. And even though this night it was my mate Nate that came up short, King Kenny has also tasted defeat. And it's that defeat that has motivated him to work harder, propelled him in his boxing career, and helped him reach a new level for the Kingpin tournament. I think is I don't want to lose again, never. And I've said this before so many times. So yeah, yeah, it's the Raksu fight. I think the Temper fight, I mean, it got overturned, but on, I didn't really feel like it was a loss because it was like, it just got overturned because of what was going on on social media and all that. Yes, it was a close fight. Let's put that to the side. But the Raksu fight, that's when I looked up at, you know, the fight and I was like, I didn't do enough to win that fight. And I never want to feel like that again. That's why I always have that in the back of my head. I never want to lose again. I have to dig deep to make sure I get that W. There's something to be said for standing back up once you fall. And King Kenny has fallen down twice, with a loss in his debut to phase temper that was a little controversial and maybe didn't feel like a loss to Kenny. King Kenny suffered what he considers to be 
the hardest loss of his career to Ashley Raksu. In the fight with Raksu, Kenny was defensive and looked great on his back foot, slipping shots, but did lack a bit of offense. Hesitant to step on the gas and throw punches ultimately led to King Kenny's loss and a shocking revelation. Something had to change. Well, for me, the, going into that fight, a lot of people were talking, saying it's gonna be an easy fight. And, and I was trying to tell people in every interview, we're not trying to overlook him, you know, and he has experience. Just because he hasn't been on a, mix, a Misfits show, he's still got, he's got experience. He's like the similar experience to my brother. You know what I mean? It's only because my brother's on the platform, you know, that everyone's looking at my brother like he should win the fight. So I wasn't looking at Raksu as like some pushover, easy fight. We were taking it very seriously and I was trying to tell everyone this is going to be the, the hardest fight of, of uh, because it was see Sensei. Sensei uh, has got a lot of experience, a lot of technical experience. But the reason why I was excited for that fight is because I knew I would get to see a technical fight, you know, because that's the world I come from. I don't come from the world where you, the bell rings and everyone's just going at it because they want to please the influencer fan base, you know? So Sensei fight, I loved it from a technical aspect. But the Raksu fight, you know, obviously I was angry, you know, after the fight, you know? Um, but once we got over it pretty quickly, like only a day or two, and then we were like, you know what? For me as a coach, what I learned is I, to, to find a balance between teaching him the way I want to teach him, um, staying true to my values, my, my methods, but also giving the fans what they want to see. He's looking to punish opponents, keep his winning streak alive, and never taste defeat again. The other day I, I, I sparred pros back to back, we did six rounds, three rounds, one pro, three rounds, another pro is grueling, man. It's been a very tough camp, but what I will say is that my level has just gone even higher because I'm, I'm lasting with them, you know, I'm actually trading with them, I'm competing with them. Um, my IQ has gone up because I'm learning from them as well, so it's been tough. And some days I will get, I, I will get beat, but then, you know, that's how you learn. You can't always be beating people up and sparring, you know? So, yeah, this camp has been by far the toughest camp, but it's good. Two, three weeks ago, I ain't gonna say his name because it's not good to mention sparring partners, but we done six rounds. At the end of the six rounds, what impressed me is Kenny goes, give me one more round, give me one more round, I want to do one more round. That's music to my ears, I like that, you know? So the bell rings. Started, you know, fainting, yeah. jab, right, fucking fainted. I mean, in the middle of the ring, in the center, landing, trading, like it's Gatti versus Ward. Block, block, defense, and I finished him with a left hook. He went down. Peach of a brutal left hook from Kenny come out of nowhere and knock the guy out. And this is where I knew I lost my mind because I was envisioning a fight. I went straight to the ropes and I started celebrating. I had to pull him down and go, Kenny, what are you doing? It's sparring. You can't celebrate when someone's lying there on the floor. You know what I mean? So I was just like, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but it was a very good spa, man. Yeah. I wish. I wish I could watch it back. Yeah. It was one of the most brutal spars I had. Like I really had to dig deep in that spa, but. Kenny has had one of the toughest roads in influencer boxing, starting with his fight with Faze Temper, a 6'3 Southpaw, then fighting one of the most experienced martial artists in our scene in Faze Sensei, winning versus DK Money, losing to Ashley Raksu. The highs and the lows have been experienced in the camp of King Kenny. And just when you thought he'd seen it all, his next challenge will be his absolute toughest. And while on the night, his talking will be done with his hands, he has one last message for Wenderson Nunes. Acabo para você, muito pequeno. He knows what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew I would make it this far? They hated, they never believed me. Yeah, I would never drop the ball. I know I make it look easy. Yeah, Mayweather with the defense. Okay. I'm gonna show you.